Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, everybody. I think we're working, so welcome to Tipo's Corner. I'm your host, Travis. That's me. Hopefully you had a good day. I don't know if y'all um, are in different time zones, if you enjoy, like, first thing in the morning getting up and perusing YouTube, or if this is like, do you come in at the end of the day and relax and not unwind by checking out some vids real quick on your phone? I don't know how y'all absorb this particular content. But, we're back to playing the pre-maids. This one is Stealthy Subterfuge. This one's a little bit different in the sense that they changed some of the pre-maids and they didn't tell us. They added on like Brothers War cards and Dominaria cards to a mixed effect. This one, they didn't change. Um, as far as I can tell, it's almost entirely Kamigawa based. Um, there is maybe one Streets of Nuka Penna card in here somewhere. And let's see, oh, Heroes Downfall is in Estrad. And let's see, where are you? Fake Your Own Death is from Streets of New Cabana. And then anything else? Okay, one more Innistrad for the two Fading Hopes. And that's it. And the rest is pure Kamigawa. They're using the ninjutsu mechanic. That's what they're focusing on. And so maybe that's why they didn't change anything is because ninjutsu is only contained within Kamigawa. And all the expansions that have come out before and after it so far... Uh, we don't have a lot that's synergistic with it in that sense. So we're going to go ahead and go out and play it. And we don't have to do the comparisons this time like I did on the others. We did uh, Grave Matters, which they I did not like the changes that they made. And we did um, Balancing Act which was kind of 50-50. The, the changes that they made still seem to have the same effect. They weren't bad changes all around, but about half of those changes I still probably would have not preferred they do. So uh, luckily I had the original build because I exported all of the pre-mades before they made their changes. And I don't know if I bothered to export the ones after. The ones after so far have been slightly not as good. This one, we just have to play. And not the greatest start. There's a lot of tap lands in here. It doesn't hurt us so much for this because we don't have a one or two drop anyway. So the tap lands here aren't going to hurt us any more than just the fact that we don't have a one or two mile play in the first place. What the heck? And this deck doesn't usually give me land problems. You can see it's a lot of mostly two and three mana spells. Okay, what do we want to break out with first? Um, let's go with our Planeswalker. We'll get out somebody who can't block. The system can't fix everything, but we if can. We want a ninjutsu right away. We our can. eyes are everywhere. Big Bound Judge can't stop us. And, yeah, let's just attack. And, let's do the Thief. Hit him for three, get a treasure, and go ahead and draw a card. I know well, something you don't okay. know. That lets us... I think we keep Fake Your Own Death? Maybe, no, they've got white. What they're going to do is they're going to exile it, if anything. Do I want to put him at risk? Or save this for Kotose? There's nothing in the graveyard for Kotose to hit. Let's go ahead and do as much as we can right up front. I feel like we're already playing catch up a little bit. And having a 4-4 blocker is a bit of a pain already for us. Oh, it's a defender deck. That's why Drawbridge was there. They've already got 3-1-1 flyers. We are already in trouble. The type of stuff that we have. Katos would just trade with Faithbound Judge anyway. Um... 
Okay, so we attack. They're willing to do Faithbound Judge. When they get seven, they can bring out the Sinner's Judgment. We can't do much against that, but we can get rid of the 4-4 at least. And we get to bring back our own. We get a treasure from it. We'll go ahead and get a draw card. Now this is a juicy secret. That part isn't bad, but we don't have anything to stop the flyers, which means our planeswalker is already history. But let's see. It enters the battlefield with a menace counter. Three, three. So let me just enter it regularly. If they take out the Planeswalker with the birds, will they bother to block the Biting Palm Ninja? They can only activate their abilities as sorcery, although they just got basically, if they get one more land, they've got three more 3-3 three, three attackers. And never mind, they summoned enough blockers already. They can block everybody just fine. Am I stuck on defense now? Let's see if they just chump lock anything. They're just chump blocking. They can afford that. Um, we'll put down this for a flyer. And if we burn a treasure, we can add plus two to it. So if we need to do more than block a 1-1, one, one, we can. We've at least two turns away from them doing Sinner's Judgment. And we could also do Fake Your Own Death on somebody if we need to. One or the other. Pump up the Infiltrator. Another bird. They can really just get us in the sky if they want to go all out. And there they go. I can only block one at a time. That's about 15 points worth of damage if they don't get anything new <laughs> in the next few turns for birds. <sighs> okay, so what do we do here? I think we just do a regular summoning? Would they, would they chump block with a bird? They've got the suspicious staircase there. Ugh. Okay, I'm not going to be able to use Sataro's ability if I just bring them in for via regular summoning. So you can see I'm at a very big disadvantage here. All we're going to do is throw away this 1-1. One, one, gets rid of a, one of the flyers. They're holding up priority because they can tap one of our creatures right now if they feel like. Um, so Taro's just basically, he's not going to get through anyway, so if he's going to have to be a blocker. And I need the flyers free. They could just let me through maybe. They've got a way to make sure they can't be blocked on one of them. They can tap down one of my other creatures another way. Okay, so... I can do this now. Do I do it? All right. We may get a little help here from the extra card draw, finally, as Umazawa's ability kicks into gear. 
We need some kind of advantage there. We hold the unspeakable. And since we're gonna hit them, because they didn't block. Okay, they get rid of one of our blockers. We're kind of tapped out. We get a treasure, we get a card. Uh, I guess we're taking it. And I can use Fake Your Own Death with the Treasures on the Moon Snare Specialist if they want to start throwing the Bulwarks at us. All they got was land. So there's a 4-4. Four, four. They're using the Bulwark ability on the bookcase. And the drawbridge? Oh, they're gonna they're gonna do everybody that they can. It's like what, 15 points of damage? Okay, we'll block there, we'll block there. We'll use Fake Your Own Death on the Moon Snare Specialist. That takes up our treasures. So we get rid of a 4-4. Four -four. It's a lot of damage. And we get rid of one more 1-1 one -one flyer. And everybody loses a couple points. Two... Let's see. That one's still a three. So we can attack with this one. Would they bother to block? Let's just let it through. I didn't have any extra mana to do any ninjutsu stuff. There comes Sinner's Judgment. Starts the clock. I got three turns left. I, do I need land? Three, four, five. I feel like I need land. Three, four, five, six, five, six, seven. Let's try and do it with the land that we have. We need options. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Okay, we get one life out of it. Um, what can we do here? Three, four, five. Not enough land for Kotose, really. And I need to keep three open for Hero's Downfall. It's not a lot of damage, right? But if we do this, bring the thief up, bring him down Biting Palm Ninja, we get to activate this again and we get somebody. And then do we use that or no, I need to keep I need to keep Heroes Downfall going. So we get rid of the menace counter. Choose a non-land card, we get rid of that. Perfect, because we're gonna need this, so that was a perfect play. And then I think we just end the turn with where we're at. We're down to seven. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fif Fifteen points they can send our way, maybe? There's three. There's another three. There's another three. Okay. Um, what do we do? I feel like one of the biggest threats is this clockwork drawbridge to tap down our own creatures. And we can get rid of one of these guys with the treasure. And that's good enough to use next turn, I think. We still block one of these. And we go ahead and we block you there. And let's go ahead and just kill you there. And we take one point of damage. 
we lose two of our creatures in the process. But we get a blocker. Still only one counter there. Long reach of night. Sacrifice a creature. You don't have any cards to discard. Sacrifice your... Oh, they sacrificed the tap one. Okay, of course. Next. Tap you. And... We're coming through with those two. Do you chump block? You're not gonna chump block? That's gonna be game. <laughs> I was gonna bring down the 3 2 in place of the infiltrator. We did. We beat the Wing Mantle Defender deck. I had to go slow and reason that out each time. And this is one of the small drawbacks in the game, in the way this deck is constructed. There's not a lot of removal and interaction. I just got the two main pieces in the last few draws. And, oh, we, we got our daily chore done. Sweet! We leveled up. Awesome. Let me go back in and show you the deck real quick. We'll go in and do a couple more battles after this. Maybe they'll go a little bit faster. Sometimes, because you've got this ninjutsu ability, it gives you a lot of options. So even though you don't have counter spells, um, the, the flavor of the mechanic forces you to slow down and consider, okay, I have three or four different things that I could do. I've really got to stop and figure out what the best line is on this. But one of the potential weak things of this is you really need your cheap flyers out first followed by something that you can bring down with an ninjutsu ability to, to get any kind of advantage because your creatures are kind of weak. You know, you got a bunch of, um, you know, here a thousand face shadow can steal the game if you can make them work, but it's really difficult to get him down and get enough mana going to really still be able to attack with enough creatures to make it worthwhile to get through. In the meantime, a lot of your creatures are like the network disruptors, which are one ones, not that tough. They're their uh, toughness is all down at the ones, you know, <laughs> ones and twos, unless we get to build up the silver fur masters. Um, so one of the big difficulties is you've only got two copies of Heroes Downfall to destroy things, and you've only got one long reach of night, which if they've got extra land in their hand, uh, is kind of ineffective. So you know what else do we got? Maybe a couple of fading hopes on tokens, and and maybe a little bit of stalling with your moon Sarah snare specialist to throw the targets back up to their hand there's really not a lot of uh removal or interaction in this deck so i feel like this deck relies on luck a lot more than most but if you do get the cards in the right order you can get a win very fast you can have things snowball and win on turn four or five and really, not really win on turn four, but just have such a setup so far in advance that the, the opponent realizes they can't catch up. And it'll become very obvious by turn four. But you need your cheap flyers up front. And it's tough to mulligan on it. And every time that you gotta be forced to put one down without doing the ninja abilities you're putting it at risk for removal. So here are choices. Do we throw away one of our own creatures and see what they've got? Or do we use the Prosperous Thief? Or Let's see if we're getting through. Let's do the ninja two trick here with Biting Palm Ninja. Reveal your hand. I debated just hitting them for three points and leaving it on so we could have a 3-3, three, three. but look at the stuff we've got. They've got an Elish Norn. 
Mythic rare, mythic rare. Ugh. They can just get stuff back from their hand. And they're going to put down that guy next. Um, let's actually just get rid of that. So they can't bring anything back for starters. Hopefully they just bring down the 2-2 because we do have the ability to kill it. And they're not going to be able to play safekeeping because they're going to be tapped out. So. Submit zero. Destroy this thing before they bring down another creature and start going wide with a whole bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens that this guy can bring, generate. And they can still get down Falco next, which is a problem for us. Oh, they do Giada instead. Falco comes down with a shield counter, and we don't have Menace on the Biting Palm Ninja anymore. So. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what happens here. They could block with Giada and use Tamiya's safekeeping, right? Yeah. Okay, but Tam, but it, we don't lose the creature. Do I draw a card now? I don't really have anything better to do, do I? Um, actually, hang on. Can I get rid of all of the safekeepings? Do they have more of these in their deck? We get another peek at their hand to see their new card, too. They just got another land. That means Elish Norn is probably coming down real soon. We do get rid of three of those. They've got a Port of Phyrexia and a Nisa and a Tyrannus Rex. They've got a bunch of bombs in here. Rares and Mythic Rares. Oh, never mind. That was an impressive deck we were looking at. We can actually see the whole thing right now because they scooped the way they did. Wandering Emperor, Mythic Rare. We were going to take their three Tamiya Safekeepings and that was it. But look, they got Sigarda, they got Tainted Observer, White Sun's Twilight for a board wipe if they need it, Coyote. They they have a whole bunch of one-offs. They got Mondrak and Portal and Tyrannex, Helia and Archangel. These are all very big threats. That's a big threat. That's a big threat. Skrelv can shut us down. They've got Calyx for heaven's sake. They've got a couple of the Sunfalls. A lot of the other... We made a good choice because the, a lot of the other stuff, they just had one-offs. I think that they made a mistake. I mean, between Elishnorn and Falcol alone, can we match any of that? We could maybe get through it once, <laughs> you know, and get rid of one of them. Uh, but they've got so many other things that were going to be coming up. I'm not so sure that we could have kept pace. So, all right. Maybe I was just going too slow. Maybe they didn't like the fact that I was going to learn what was in their deck. They didn't want me to have all that much information. Sometimes that information kind of scares you when you see what you're up against for the rest of the, the match. You just look at the Mythic Rare after Mythic Rare and you're like, Oh, how do I deal with that one? Oh, how do I deal with that one? I've got two cards that destroy target creatures or planeswalkers. And that's it. And I didn't have them in hand. And one of the creatures they were going to bring down had a shield token on it anyway. Okay. I do like having that up front. Opponent gets to go first, which is not ideal. And this is the Grave Matters deck that we're going up against. this. They're just gonna bring back Fell Stinger if I kill their butler. The question is, is my opponent the type that attacks with their undead butler or do they wait for me to swing in? Rustin can just block. Rustin can go wide. I think if we're going to take these opponents out, we need to move fast. 
But I don't want to... He can already cast Fell Stinger. I don't want to bring a Death Toucher down on the ground right away. I do need more land. If I can get through with my Life Linker, I just need to... It depends on if they get a creature down or not. If they get a second creature down, I'm not going to get through. They're looking at their graveyard. They just get everything back. Oh, wait. You don't have a creature in the graveyard now. So what do I care if you block? Um, what do I care if you block? <laughs> that was an easy way. <laughs> to get rid of the undead butler. You, you you didn't... You just exiled it for no reason. I still have to deal with the death toucher, right? Or will they just bring down Rustine again? I, uh, a different creature. Are they going to bring down... Okay, so they'll exploit the sprout for the card draw. Not bad, only one mana and a 1-1 one -one that starts off, so not a big deal to sacrifice it for them. Still no land, which is going to be a problem for us. They're holding up priority with the blood token in the land, so we're going to have to wait for them to realize it every time. It means there's going to be a, sort of like a delay on the football broadcast, so to speak. It's going to slow the whole thing down. Come on. We do them damage, get them under 20 finally, and we do lifelink. And that's all we need to do. You see, they've got six lands already. This is a problem for us. They have way more removal than we do in their deck. They did lose two Terra Sunders. So I am happy about that because they could just be exiling our stuff. Alright. So if we fly over their heads... I can bring down you. Five points of damage. We used up every bit of land we had. They have now have land and treasures and the flexibility of the blood tokens to just cycle through stuff if they feel like. Seven lands. They can cast anything they want. And they've got blockers on the ground now for days. And a blob, which is a problem for me. Because this generates tokens every turn and I can't outscale that. And my flyers alone can't kill it and can't kill the opponent in time. They've got way too many different card types here, and our deck does not have graveyard hate. So, consuming blob was something that fills up your graveyard. It was, and they already use removal, so the biggest thing that I had going for me is gone. So, we're gonna die. Still no land. Um. There's virtually nothing left for me to do. It would be better if these had flash. I'm not sure that we would have had a chance anyway, but... Seven lands and a treasure to four lands. A lot of decks are going to lose to that. I'm not sure this was really fair. Yeah, they're just 
what was I going to do? Four points of damage to them next turn? Not even close. If I'd gotten a fifth land, I could have given them all minus two at least. Maybe that would have given me a little bit of breathing room. You do need lands to play the deck. And it doesn't matter, even if you're playing with the pre-mades, if, if you win a battle, you win a battle or two, and I won a couple battles today already, then eventually they just land starve you. So you gotta suck it up and just move on to the next one. Still waiting for that good deal, that perfect deal for this particular deck. It would be nice to show up today so I can show you all how it looks when it's really popping off the way it can at the very beginning. Again, none of our flyers... Arena hates me today. They're usually... there's at least a flyer finally. It's not really the one we want. But it can get the job done if they don't kill it right away. If the game does last, this makes for a good monosync. It does make for a good pumpable defender or surprise attacker. If if you can manage it, it's not a bad idea to have one or two monosyncs in your hand, in your in your deck. But a 1-2 versus a 3-2 for the same amount of mana opening up, we are already at a disadvantage. We can see what's in their hand. We can't bring down our 5-5. Five five. Streets and Ukrapena, three colors. They got their three colors on their third turn. They've got a flying blocker. And uh, we're pretty much dead again already. Because we can't get past their flyer. that um so what do we do what do we do um Sataro there's no penalty for Rafine to block my one two flyer even if they can't kill it it's still just block it It's a nice little mythic rare bomb in case we throw in case we get rid of that. I don't think they have anything to fear from us. They can just attack actually. And they had everything they needed. Perfect mix of creatures and interaction to dismantle me from the very start. And four lanes already and they got to go first. And we're still on three lands. With five and six mana cards. The most powerful cards in the entire deck. The most expensive cards in the entire deck. And they started us out with them. This is like... Arena's treating me like I, I made this deck myself. I've, I've been pointing out for... Since they changed the algorithm for the month. How they, they keep sticking me with the most powerful things. And what's left for me to do? Um, die. I mean, really, there's just no point to that. Uh, on curve, perfect play, third turn, flying Rafine, mythic rare. You've got to have something that has interaction in the current meta environment. The opponent has too many good things that they can put out very early now. And even if it doesn't seem good, there's a lot of synergies among all the, the multiple expansions that we have available to us right now. You can put out something that seems innocuous on turn one and it kills you by turn four. I mean, think, we don't have anything to deal with something like an Urbrass Forge. And that's hot right now. 
And that's one of the reasons it might have been a good thing that uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker has been banned, because it's it's enabled certain other things to shine, so to speak, right? It did open up that three slot. And now I'm seeing Urbass Forge sort of fill it a lot. Whereas before I wasn't coming across it that much. So it's actually, a, I feel like it's a bigger pain to deal with. I mean, it's still just enchantment versus artifact, but... Uh, let's see, we could discard something. Yeah. Because this is 2-2 two, two with Toxic 2. So... The tapping ability is more important than Thousand Face Shadow. So we discard this puppy, destroy their 2-2, two, two, and we bring down the Network Disruptor now because that's what we want to use to bring out the others. But you can see already, we, we put out the cheap stuff. They've matched us for land. We've got three things left up in our hand. They've got six cards. And you add up our total toughness, and we've got six toughness for our creatures. And now they have a flying blocker. Um, if I do that, I can't do that. Let it through, please. Okay. Um, there. Where's your green stuff? We want to see more green stuff, right? No, they're just going to get rid of Silver Fur Master. It's okay for now. We can still need the ninjutsu stuff if they can't put out a flyer, right? Still no land, which is a problem. But, we can sort of make up for it a little bit with just one Prosperous Thief. Okay, since we have the treasure, I can afford to keep the Network Disruptor up in my hand. Because we can still play the Disruptor, and with the treasure I can ninjutsu in the Specialist and unsummon something of theirs. Has to be a creature. I don't think we have any rune lands in order to get rid of this stuff. Oh, man. That's kind of tough. All right, um, we're just not getting any lands tonight. I don't know, this is like third in a row, really. This is this used to be uncommon with this particular deck, but five to three already. We're not long for this world. They get rid of Surge of Salvation, which is just about as effective as... They could have saved that if we'd gone after that another way anyway, right? Discard something else, right? There we go. Indoctrination Attendant. That was a 3-4, though. I don't know. I probably would have kept the 3-4. Alright, so we just bring you down straight up. Throw you back up into the hand. These can't walk. Another specialty land. Mirix and Mirix. Okay. We can block with the 0 4.
Hmm. They can't block. This gives us a treasure. We're not getting land. I have to do something. I have to do something. We have fake your own death we can use. So, if they come at us with the Jawbone Duelist, we're going to take a lot of poison here, though. We don't have any way to get rid of any of these lands. Okay. We come to you. Fig your own death. Get rid of the QQ, the double spectre anyway. And now all of these have lifelink, which does make things tough for us, but auto pay. None of those can block. And we made them 2 2, so we just attack with everybody. Animus packs a big punch. Maybe we got him after all. <laughs> we got him. It worked. Kind of glad that worked the way it was. I'm not sure we had. Uh, I'm not sure we had another way out. So you can see, I'm not very confident with this deck sometimes, but it's really kind of they they've been really stingy with the land this entire time. We'll try one more. They can't just give me two or three lands for the entire match repeatedly, can they? Who am I kidding? It's it's Arena. Of course they can. And we've got the proof because if, you, <laughs> if you're new and you haven't consulted the backlog of the hundreds of videos that I've put out, you can see what they do to me. And I'm not alone. It's not that they're out just to get me. We've had feedback from some other subscribers that'll tell me that these kind of things happen. Okay, I think it's okay to put out... No, you know what? Let me put out the flyer. Yoshin Dissonant. Okay, so... We attack. You get more damage in on the first turn. Two points. You go back up into your hand. We get a little bit of tempo on them. They put that down instead. Okay. Wish we'd gotten a land. But we pump up our creature. So three more unanswered four points. It's an okay start. We got land. We got land, people. Um, I don't know that I want to destroy anything. Artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter. I think we're fine with that. Um, let's put down this. And we just go and attack. Chump block? I'm fine with that. That was a good turn. That was a good turn for us. What are they doing? Do they do you not have land? Are you getting land starved now? Oh, I wanted like a good battle, not this. Yeah, that was sorry, dude. Arena's just using me now to enforce a fifty percent rate on somebody else. So I finally get a decent number of lands at the opening, and all they do is land starve my opponent. Okay, Arena, I'm gonna try this one more time. I would like a decent battle where everybody gets some land, please. And if you could give me one of my 1 1 flyers, or any flyer up front, that would have been nice. I do have an on curve planeswalker. He's not necessarily the most devastating planeswalker there is, but if the opponent is slow, we could keep them around for a little bit. I have two of those. Kind of don't mind if they kill it.
that doesn't work on planeswalkers. You'll never see me coming. <laughs> I've got all kinds of connections. He's also accompanied by a bunch of animals all the time. Okay, that one can't be blocked. A rat. Do I discard or do I just throw it back up? I think we just throw it back up. Let's do a tempo move. We lose our 1 1. We hit him for 2. Oh, that's the draw card one. Never mind. I kind of messed that up, didn't I? But we still get to draw a card here. And. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. If they have removal, they can still kill our planeswalker with the with the rat. Um, what if I sacrifice the one that's tapped? Then you're willing to make the trade because it gives me a second poison token. And let's go ahead and draw. Draw and discard. What do we discard? Know. I don't think life matters as much. Let's put down a 3 2. Let's just go ahead. Let's go for broke. So they could have some more removal. They've got a point. Noint with Affliction and Vraska's Fall. They've probably got four of each. And they might have Children's Edict. whenever you proliferate. Exile and a... Okay. Four. Uh, is it worth five points? I think so. Bam. There's no secret I can't uncover. 4-4, four, four. okay. Three poison counters, they're getting some life gain off of this. One, ooh, <laughs> hello. I've been watching your moves. Impressive. Here's a little trick. They're willing to proliferate and get the life gain, but if we get rid of that guy now, Then they lose that. We still get the poison counter, but they don't get the life gain and stuff off of that. But they can bring something back with that of rebirth. We get another card draw. Now, what and do we have here? I think we're good. They're not even using the vat yet. There we go. Ouch. That one kind of hurt. Um, move a counter. That re reveals their hand. Let's just attack and see if they want to trade. They probably do. Just the one. Six poison counters. We get the life gain again. We get the draw because we attacked. Oh, hello. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. Hmm. Hmm. You don't say. Light belly rat in their hand. Get rid of the three of the Vraska's Falls. What else do we have? Board wipe, a couple of Vraska, Planeswalkers, more Vats, Archfiend of the Dross. How many of those do they have? Just the one. Okay, Infectious Inquiries, that could give us three more Poison Tokens. There's their draw card advantage and three more Anointing with Inflictions. 
and drown in acres. Okay. So still a lot of problems we got to get through. Um, I think we just go ahead and bring this down now. We'll tap you. Doesn't do much good to tap, but. Seven poison tokens. They're up above 20 already. I need them to sacrifice this one. <laughs> um, let's see. So if we do this now. We attack now. We do the ninjutsu. Bring the flyer up. Mm, three, four, six, seven. I guess we take the disruptor. And one, two. Hang on. Remove a menace. Is it worth looking what's in their hand? I think so. Non land? Okay. That was good for us. We get to draw another card. Now, what play the do we land. Here? Get the flyer down so we can. Yeah, get the flyer down so that we can attack next time. Okay, but we're at seven poison. Proliferate, proliferate, eight, nine, and then they just bring it back. Oh, hello, we're dead. They got us with all the poison. And, and the scheming aspirin out every time kind of shows you the problems we're having. Uh, because here, this just kills us right with the proliferate. And I don't have any way to stop the proliferation. Phyrexian Toxic beats us again. And you see we kind of built up to where... If it wasn't for the toxic element of things, we might have been able, we were getting close to getting the emblem. Whenever you deal combat damage, you get to look for a creature and put it onto the battlefield. We were building up a nice little board presence. They they just got so much advantage out of the toxic proliferate vat of rebirth chain, and that was just with one vat of rebirth out. It's kind of an insidiously put together deck. All right, let's go in and take a look. So you see the the pre-made before Phyrexia and some of these other uh, expansions came out. Stealthy Subterfuge probably would have been a much more intimidating deck. And we didn't really get to show too much. I mean, we demonstrated the deck. Uh, we got almost all of the creatures out at some point or other. We got to use virtually every card here. You notice we never did make Thousand Face Shadow work with its special ability to create a token of another target attacking creature. That's just rare to get going. Um, but if we get the network disruptors out and then we, we ninjutsu with a two drop, and especially if we get uh, one or two more silver fur masters out to, to pump up the, uh, the strength, and then we get a little advantage from either Kato or Satoru Umaza Umazawa. And, and maybe we get a hero's downfall in there to, to help keep the enemy off our backs for a turn. Uh, you can have a quick win with this. Um, but, you see in the current environment, we didn't have much luck tonight. Um, I, I feel this was an unfair display just because we had so many mana starvation at the very beginning. Uh, and, then, and then the win we had was just completely, they only got two lands and that was, they didn't get any other lands the rest of the match. So that one, I don't really count. Uh, but I, I do like the flavor of these. I do like some of the cards. I'm not sold on the ninjutsu stuff as much. Um, although when they, when they get it going, it can be very frustrating to play against. If you don't have enough interaction against this kind of deck, it can steamroll you pretty well. Um, but I, I do like Kato a little bit. I really like, uh, if I can get it to highlight the right Planeswalk, for some reason it's, it's skipping over. <laughs> it's skipping over Sotero there. If I can, can I, there we go, Satoru Umazawa. This is a really great card that you can uh, put in other decks, as a matter of fact. So I really like him. Um, I really like Katose. 
also a good card to put in uh, other non ninjutsu decks. And uh, and I'm a big fan of Behold the Unspeakable. I've I've used this in a number. If I can get that, I've used that in a number of other decks where it's it's a little bit more useful in a different environment. A lot of the case, just because. You can end up in cases where you're just repeatedly ninjutsuing and you're bringing creatures back up so you have a nice full hand. But that can be kind of rare too. You saw where I got it. Um, I, it was down to like a 3-3 three, three or maybe a 4-4. Four, four. It wasn't that tough a creature just because I really had to play what I had just to try and keep up with the opponent. So again, they didn't change this deck. It's not performing too well for me today. It can do it really kind of strikes home the, this aspect of it's all about luck with the draw in Magic the Gathering. And not much more you can do about that. Um, leave me your comments in the comments sections. Let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know if you think maybe there was a card that we could have upgraded it with that maybe the Wizards should have gone to like Dominaria or Brothers War or Phyrexia or March of the Machines. And maybe they should have updated this deck after all. Um, rather they told us not. I mean they should have told us <laughs> they do these things anyway. But regardless, they left this one alone because of the ninjutsu mechanic and how parasitic it is, isolated as it is from any other kind of Kamigawa help. Um, so I think there was, there was not much to be done about that. But that's going to do it for us this time. Remember, like and subscribe, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a good one.